Hello and welcome to another Torch review. Today I have the U-Torch 2 in for testing. This was supplied by Gearbest for review. As usual, I'll go through all of the items and give you some thoughts on my conclusion with the Torch. This comes with a plain box, but it does have some fairly sturdy packaging inside to protect it during shipping. You get an included micro USB cable and you also have a hand strap here. This has an adjuster so you can tighten it up on your wrist and it also has a quick release which a lot of these straps don't have so that's a nice extra touch to have. A spare o-ring and you get a battery holder which is for use with the 18650 cells that makes it up to the larger size so that it won't uh, waggle around inside the torch barrel. Onto the instructions and the user manual, you'll see we have an insanely high candela rating, 124,000. That means we have a very bright spot on this torch. It's designed much more for range than for spread. And then we look through the specifications here. We have the length, weight, and the included accessories as I've shown you at the start. Now this has the same type 3 hard anodized aluminium that most of these torches have, and it's also waterproof to IPX7. And we can see here the two battery types that you can use, the 18650 and the 26650, and some operation instructions. Very simple to operate this. It gives you a little diagram just to show you anyway. Now onto the specs. We have a total of five output modes and two strobe modes. We have that candela rating and a range of around about 700 meters, they reckon. It's also drop proof to 1.5 meters. Looking at the torch, it's close to a matte finish. It's slightly satin and you'll see we have an enlarged head area on this torch. Um, we have big heat sink areas as well, just below the head and on the back, the micro USB port with the silicone cover to protect it from water and dirt. Feels good in the hand and it's quite nicely balanced with a battery in it. It's not top heavy and um, it feels uh, very comfortable using this. You see the button there is flush almost and here we just showing you in the hand good grip um, we've got some nice texturing on the barrel so this isn't a torch that's going to slip out easily. Underneath the marking shows you the model it's not a button um, just a single side switch on this torch that's just uh, something they've put on the bottom for styling unscrewing this it's already pre-greased up with silicon on the threads and we have uh, quite a decent beefy spring on this side. You can also remove the barrel section, so the head is separate. And that also has obviously a ceiling ring and another spring on there. So you're not going to get any battery waggle problems with this torch, which can be annoying on some models. You can also take off the top of the head section and this reveals the reflector. This is made out of aluminium and it also acts for heat dissipation as well. Now looking at the LED with that off, don't touch this because it's uh, not covered. You'll see there's a slight yellowish tint to it and that gives us an indication of the color tint. On this model, I'm looking at the warmer white variation. Um, here we have the reflector, a smooth type and quite deep. And you'll see the girth of it is around about six centimeters. So it's quite wide. I'm comparing it to a normal EDC torch here. You can see the difference, quite a much larger reflector on this and it's a more substantial torch as well putting in my X-Star 26650 cells, a good fit on that. And then screw up the base cap. And now I'm trying a 18650 with the adapter. So you can use the two power supplies, two different types of batteries with this. Personally, I go for the 26650, but that's my own choice on that. Now turning this on, just a single press, and you'll notice it doesn't um, change power settings easily. You actually have to press the button to cycle through. And if you do a double press, you can then activate the strobe mode. If you turn the torch off, you'll see there's a magenta LED here. That tells you that you're still in the strobe mode. So when you go back on again, it switches to the next one. Now I'm just attaching the hand strap. And I definitely like a hand strap on a torch like this because there's a bit more weight. It's not excessively heavy, but um, it allows you to hold it securely. And if you do accidentally come out the hand, then it won't fall onto the ground. It's also quite stable when you're tail standing it, but it doesn't have an anti-roll design. With the 26650 cell in, we have a weight of just under 400 grams, or if you prefer in ounces, in Imperial, it's uh, 14 ounces. 
When the battery level is low, you'll see the red LED come on just to let you know it's time to charge the torch and it will start to step down if you try and kick up the power setting. So I plug this in to test the charging speed and it's pretty much on the two amp charging. That is a safe charging speed for both cell types and it is fast. It's much faster than most torches that I've seen or used with in-torch USB charging. The red light comes on which turns to blue once it's completed the charge and then it ceases the current. As you'd expect IPX7 this is fully waterproof and you can operate the torch underwater as well. There won't be any problems with that. Here I am just uh, switching the power levels. And onto the beam, as we'd expect, we do have a very bright central spot, but there is some peripheral illumination thanks to the large reflector. The lowest output mode on this is 15 lumens, which puts it in line with the Claris G20. I perhaps would have gone slightly lower with that, but um, it's okay for close-up work. Now onto the longer distance test, we have uh, around about 100 foot. We're stepping up through the power levels. You'll immediately see that you get a spot effect with this torch. Now the camera will not see quite as good as the eyes, you do have a bit more edge illumination than it shows here, but uh, you can see the very strong intensity in the middle area, although it does start to spread out once you increase the power levels. Now another wide angle test lower down just to show you at closer distances. And then stepping up through the power settings again, you've got that very bright central spot and there's another sort of semi spot around that which is not quite as bright and then you have the defined area on the outside back to my normal test position just cycling through the power mode again you will see as with the previous shot that you do have a defined circle with this and that's quite common for torches that have a long range distance throw um, that's just how the reflector is designed and I'll show you some other torches you can see kicking up the power levels here it's really quite a bright torch and you do have that extra punch in the central area too I'm on the Rofus TR20 now this is what you would call a balanced beam you have a bit of a spot in the middle but not too much and it does give greater wider angle illumination and it distributes that more evenly I'm going to another type of torch you have the Olight S1R and this is very much a flood type light so you can see right at the edges you're still getting some illumination and it doesn't have a hot spot to it. On to my telephoto test moving up through the power settings again and you'll see the intensity really kick in in that small central area. The camera can't actually capture that because it's so bright in that particular image Onto the strobe mode, we have a standard strobe and then onto the SOS. Just a beam shot closer up, distance of about six, seven foot, and you'll see that bright spot and that moving up through the power levels, it does open up the edge illumination a bit more. You do have a narrower field of view with a torch of this type. Now I'm going to do a longer distance shot and I'll show you the edges just to see how they illuminate as well, as is common with type torches of this type once you increase the power levels the edges also improve in power as well not just the central area we can see that defined central spot and that's the part that gives you that big range on the torch this is very much designed for range you can see the beam flying off there into the sky um, if you're looking for a flood type torch this is completely different um, so this is for someone who really wants to see further distances now I have two torches here I'm just using the U torch 2 on the left and on the right hand side I have another tactical torch to show you the difference in the color beam patterns it's a slightly warmer close to daylight with the U torch and with the other torch it's a cooler effect which gives you a more whiter light you can pick which one you want with this torch so you're not stuck with one particular light color and now on to my tree test you'll see the intensity of the beam is really very strong this is a range of about 35 foot it's lighting up quite a bit more than it would do with most of the torches that I would test. Here's another test that I'm doing, starting off at the lower power levels, which is fine for closer up work. And I'll increase the power. You can see right off in the distance there, there's a building. And that's quite some way away. That's a good couple of hundred foot, if not a bit more. And then once I've kicked up to turbo, you'll see just how well that lights up the roof area. So if you need to see big distances, this is certainly a torch which could do the job nicely for you. 
I did test the power output levels real world with a 18650 cell and here's the results here in turbo and I've done exactly the same with the 26650 that will come up on the screen now and I personally couldn't see any difference um, but if there is a difference sometimes you won't be able to detect it if it's 100 lumens or so or 150 it's not immediately obvious but I've done the test anyway just to see and here we are playing around with some beam shots in the sky with two of the torches the U torches on the left you can see the warmer color pattern there Summing up with the U-Torch 2, this is a completely different type of torch from the U-Torch 1, which I also looked at. This is a much more substantial torch. It would probably work quite well for someone doing security, or if you need to cover a large distance with the torch in terms of the range um, for a work torch or something like that. You need to see longer distances. There's a couple of areas that I might have changed. I perhaps would have gone for a slightly lower output on the lowest setting and added an anti-roll body design. On the other hand, you do have a choice of two batteries, five power levels and that excellent long range beam if that's what you're looking for. Also liked the build, very solid and comfortable to hold and the charging speeds were also excellent, faster than most of the torches that I've tested to date. So don't forget to subscribe if you find the video useful. I'll be doing more torch reviews shortly. If you have any questions or comments, then please leave them below.